Hi and welcome to the Philosopher's Games. It's Lord of the Rings lore time again. Also, this video contains spoilers. Last time we talked about the humans, the Dunedain to be precise. So I sought to expand this a little bit and look at their neighbors in Rohan. You remember these warning beacons of Gondor in Return of the King or the horse Shadowfax and who was at Helm Hammerhand. We come to that later. The people of Rohan are no Dunedain, which means Westmen, but are probably related to them and so-called Norsemen. In the other video I talked about the Edain, which were some tribes of men who settled in Beleriand in the west of Middle-earth during the First Age. It is believed that the Norsemen are related to the Edain, but probably did not go to Beleriand, so they did not experience the Roar of Wrath to that extent, were not gifted the island of Númenor and didn't receive expanded lifespans. Not much is known what was going on with them. We know that in the second age Númenor started to visit Middle-earth and found men who spoke a related language to their own. So in conclusion they must be related to the Edain's ancestors, the Atanatari. The Númenorians called themselves Highmen and the Norsemen and some others Middlemen. The Highmen, the Dunedain, developed a good relationship and taught them many things thanks to their advanced knowledge. Some of the middlemen even looked upon those lords of the West as some kind of gods. How much this includes the ancestors of the Rohirrim, the people of Rohan, is not known. The story of the Norsemen goes on in the Third Age. They settled in the northeast of Middle-earth, in the region called Rovanion. This region is quite large and men, elves and dwarves lived there. At some point the region was raided and conquered by the Wayne Riders. The Wayne Riders were men from the east. They expanded to the west and fought against men from Rovanion and later Gondor. They used big horse wagons and chariots, were well armed and a real threat. They also enslaved many Northmen and Gondor lost many of its northern regions to them. In the Battle of the Plains both the northern lord Marhari and Gondor's king Narmakil II died. Some of the men who called themselves the Eotheot, which could be translated with horse people, under the northern lord Marhwini, who was Marhari's son, fled with his people to the west. He is also a descendant of Rovanion's self-styled king Vidugavia, whose daughter Vidumavi married the Gondorian prince and later Gondorian king Valakar, which led to the kinstrife mentioned in my first law video, because their son Eldakar, who would become king, was not of pure Numenorian blood anymore. This also caused Umbar to become hostile to Gondor. This is a prime example of how Gondor is connected to the Norse and Rohan, so we will have more dips into the history of Gondor later. But back to Lord Marhwini. The Wayne Riders were not strong enough to further attack Gondor, so they continued to trouble the Norse, regaining strength, and Gondor backed off. Many years later Marhwini warned Gondor, who were not aware of the situation in the north and the plans of the Rain Riders. So he warns them that the Rain Riders want to conquer Kalinarthon. You should keep this name in mind. By the way, the king of Gondor back then was Kalimetar and if you have seen my last video, that is the grandfather of Thiriel, who married the king of Arnor Arvedui and this is where the bloodlines of kings of Gondor and Arnor reunite and whose descendants are the chieftains of the Dunedain and Aragorn. You see why all these family trees make things complicated. But again back to Lord Marhwini. As mentioned the Wayne Riders were still in Rovanion enslaving Norsemen and establishing settlements. After warning Gondor he fought together with King Kalimetar against them. In addition many enslaved Norsemen started to rebel in the Wayne Raiders settlements too and so they could be defeated and fled. 
At the time of Marwini's son Forthwini, the Rain Riders would recover, attack and raid Rovanion again, especially the south. But also the southern enemies of Gondor, the Haradrim, allied with the Rain Riders and attacked in the south simultaneously. King Ondoher, Kalimetar's son, had to split the army. One big northern army, which he led himself, and one smaller army to defend the south. He put the Southern army under the command of someone you might also know from my other video, Ejarnir II, the father of Ejarnur, the last king of Gondor. Ondoher and his army, including the Eotheot and his son Artamir, went to fight the Wayne Riders somewhere in Dargolat. He left his youngest son, Faramir, that is not the Faramir from the movies, behind, so if something should happen to them, there would be a rightful heir to the throne. And it should happen something. The worst case, the Rain Riders moved faster than expected and attacked the army, so to say by surprise. King Ondoher and his son died in this battle. The son of Ondoher's sister, Minhotar, took command and tried to build a defense against the Rain Riders. Also, he could have become king too. But he received very bad news. Faramir did not stay in Gondor. He disguised himself and rode with some of the Eotheot, but got trapped during the retreat in the Dead Marshes and was mortally wounded there. He was found by the leader of the Eotheot and died in his arms. The leader brought Faramir's body to Minhotar. A short time later, Minhotar's defense was overwhelmed and the next heir of the throne died. Meanwhile in the south, Earnil II was victorious and destroyed the Haradrim forces. After this he rode as fast as possible to aid against the Rain Riders. But he was too late. He collected the remaining forces of the retreating northern army and attacked the already celebrating Wayne Riders by surprise in the so-called Battle of the Camp. They defeated the unprepared rain riders and drove them into the dead marshes, where they perished. Many dead from different ages lie in the dead marshes. Men, elves, silver elves from the War of the Last Alliance at the end of the Second Age, but also men from Gondor, Eotheot and rain riders from the Third Age. A strange place. With the death of Minotar, Gondor had no heir. Well, I said Firiel was not from the reigning bloodline in the last video. This was not 100% precise. Originally, she was from the reigning line, but after these events, the reigning line changed. In the Appendix A of The Lord of the Rings, we can read that the king of the Arthedine, Arvedui, claimed the right to rule over Gondor, because his wife, Firiel, was the daughter of Ondoher, but it was granted to Earnil II, who was victorious in this war. The steward Pelendur played a big part in this and Gondor and Arvedui were discussing the matter, even that Firiel becomes queen and how this was a Numenorean tradition. I recommend reading the Appendix A for a more complete overview. In the end, Gondor looked at Arthedain, which was all that was left of the Dunedain kingdom of Arnor, after long wars against Angmar, as quite small and close to its end. Also, there was this prophecy, Arvedui means last king and Malbeth the seer foretold that name and that if the Dunedain take a choice that is less hopeful, then Arvedui will become king of a great realm and he will change his name, else much sorrow will be the result. Well, probably this choice was meant and it did not turn out well. Even though Earnil II was wise and promised his support to Arvedui and also noted that he does not deny their kinship because they are both descendants of Elendil, Isildur's father. But Earnil II would be late to keep his promise as explained in the last video, so their claim of the crown was refused and Firiel stayed with her husband Arvedui in Arthedain, the only thing left of the kingdom of Arnor, which was plagued by Angmar and the Witch King. 
But let's move back to Rohan. After the war against the Wain Riders, the Eotheot were well known and respected in Gondor. As mentioned, the last part of the war against Angmar and the fall of the kingdom of Arthedain are next in history. After this war, Angmar was defeated and lands of it in the north were freed. But many orcs and Easterlings, probably from Dol Guldur, were troubling the Eotheot around the Gladden Fields, so they had to move again, this time further into the north of Rovanion. Later, under the next king, Frumgar, son of Forthwini, they started building their new capital. And Frumgar's son, Fram, should become their next king. He had to deal with a dragon named Shatha, who plagued this region. He had a big treasure from the dwarves. Fram went out and slew the dragon, claiming his hoard or treasures. To his honor, the capital was named Framsburg. The dwarves also claimed the treasure of the dragon, but Fram refused and just sent them a few dragon teeth and a witty answer. The dwarves were not amused and it is rumored that they would kill him for it later. Though parts of the treasure were probably saved by his ancestors. For the next 500 years we don't know what was going on there, until Lord Leod, a descendant of Fram. He tried to tame a white horse, but it was wild and threw him off. He fell on a rock with his head and died. So his son, and you should keep his name in mind, Earl, succeeded him. Earl was a very important person in the history of Rohan. As mentioned, his father died because of that horse. He was quite young, about 16, so he hunted that horse and argued with it that it shall give up his freedom for the death of his father. It agreed and he gave it the name Felarov. He was the first of the Meras. It is said that only the descendants of Earl could write them and that they understood the speech of men. You remember Shadowfax, the horse of Gandalf? It was a Merath and probably a descendant of Felarov. Of course Gandalf being a Maya on an important mission and sent by the gods could convince Shadowfax to help him out too. Keep in mind that I said the story continues 500 years later. At this time Gondor was faced by a new threat. A clan of Easterlings called Balkoth, probably related to the Rain Riders from back in the day and under the influence of Dol Guldur where Sauron hit. In addition Gondor was weakened because of the mentioned wars against the Wain Riders and Angmar in the past. They had lost their king and were under the rule of the ruling steward. They lost Minas Ithil and the Eotheot moved further to the north so more and more Easterlings could pressure the north of Gondor building a new threat. The ruling steward Kirion sent out six messengers to Earl, but only one made it there alive named Borondir. He brought a red arrow with him. You probably know this from the books because this should become the sign to call Rohan for help and was also used when Gondor called Rohan to help defend Minas Tirith against Sauron. The arrow wasn't present in the movie though, but those warning beacons of Gondor on the mountains as seen in the movies were built too, but in the books they were built in the second age so there was a fast way for North and South Gondor to warn each other. But of course they still exist and work in the Lord of the Rings. The ruling steward Kirion did not know if his message arrived Earl and he gathered a big army and faced the Balkoth but was surprised by an additional orc attack from the Misty Mountains. They were in a hopeless situation until Borondir, Lord Earl the Young on his horse Felarov and the Eotheod army arrived. They destroyed the Balkoth and orcs completely. Borondir died in this battle and the battle itself was called the Battle of the Field of Celebrand. For the service to Gondor in greatest need, Earl was gifted the province of Calenarthon, which was pretty much still deserted from the Great Plague several hundred years ago. 
And so Earl and Weotheot moved from Framsburg to the new region and named it the Riddermark, or as Gondor calls it, Rohan. And the Eotheot became the Eorlingas, or as Gondor calls them, the Rohirrim, the Horse Lords. Eorl and Kirion swore an oath of friendship, and Kirion even called Eru for this oath, even though he was not the king. This took place at Halifirien, at the site of Elendil's tomb, and was called the Oath of Kirion and the Oath of Eorl. And with this, Rohan, the Riddermark, was founded and Eorl became the first king of Rohan. His name, the Young, came from the fact that he was about 16 when he became Lord of the Eotheot and he never became grey. Eorl built the probably first city and first capital Altburg. He and his people also drove out the Dunelandings, who also tried to settle there, but without the permission of Gondor. They should become a constant threat, but also Easterlings tried to invade Rohan, and so Eorl the Young died in a battle against Easterlings. He and his horse Felarov were buried together in the first royal mound. He was succeeded by his son Brejo. Under him the migration of his people to Rohan was making further progress and he continued to defend Rohan's borders from the Dunelandings and Easterlings. He also built the Golden Hall called Meduselt, the house of the king in Edoras, and made it the new capital. I could not find out if Edoras was built under Earl or his son Brejo, but it was around that time. Brejo had three sons, Baldor, Aldor and Eothor. All of them have something to do with the story of Lord of the Rings. Baldor for some reason went to the path of the dead. This path I assume connects Rohan and Gondor. You know this place from Lord of the Rings. Aragorn goes through this path to come to the stone of Erech or Erech. At this stone some tribes of men from the mountains once swore an oath to Isildur. Here Aragorn summons the Oathbreakers, these ghost warriors, to aid him. Baldor never returned and Aragorn and his friends probably found his body later while going through this pass. Eofor is an ancestor of Eomund, the father of Eomer and Eowyn, very important characters in Lord of the Rings. Interestingly, Eomund was married to Theoden's sister Theodwin, and this leads to Eofor's older brother Aldor. Aldor would succeed his grieving father Brejo as a king after his death, and he is an ancestor of King Theoden and of course Theodwin. He would be known as Aldor the Old because he reigned as a king the longest of any king of the Riddermark. Under his rule, Rohan grew and he had three daughters and a son named Freya, who would become king when he was 75 years old, so quite late. He only reigned for 14 years. His son Freya Winne succeeded him. There is a note that he probably had other relatives who mingled with the dune landings. We come later to that, so keep this in mind. After this we have his son Goldwinne, succeeded by Deor. Now things slowly start to become interesting again. With Deor the peaceful time in Rohan ended and Dunelanding started to raid over the river Isen or Eisen. A short note here regarding the pronunciation. I use mainly the old English pronunciation rules because the language of Rohan is pretty much old English. And there it is Isen. Tolkien himself read it Eisen once, so I assume later in history people might have said Eisen and Eisengard. But we are still several hundred years before the Lord of the Rings and I will continue using the old English pronunciation rules because I'm used to it by now and it makes sense. Keep in mind that I mess up sometimes. But let's continue. As mentioned, dune landings were raiding the land. King Deor formed a little army and found out that they were coming from the direction of Isengard. With an expedition, he defeated dune land raiders on his way and found Isengard taken by enemy forces. 
He was not able to conquer it back and he called for the oath of Kirion, but Gondor could not send help at this time because I assume they had some problems with orcs. So Deor kept an army close to Isengard, so he could keep an eye on his enemies. Now we come to a very interesting point in Rohan's history. The son of Deor was Gram. He continued the work of his father and had to defend Rohan against the Dunelandings. You probably have heard of his son, Helm Hammerhand. Helm succeeded his father and had also to bother with Duneland. A Dunelanding named Freka with Rohirric blood came. He claimed that he was not only a Dunelanding but also a descendant of King Freawinne. Maybe you still remember that I mentioned something when I talked about Freawinne. Freka had a fortress and even Helm had counsel with him sometimes. At some point he came to Helm with a great force of men and wanted that his son Wolf marries Helm's daughter. They even threatened the king but Helm did not accept and punched Freka so hard in the face that he died from this mighty blow. And this is why he is called Helm Hammerhand. Freka's men left Edoras and reported to Wolf. Wolf was not amused and gathered an army and allied with other enemies of Rohan and totally overrun the Riddermark. Helm and his army faced them but lost and Helm and his son Hama had to withdraw. Helm's other son Haleth died defending Edoras at the doors of Meduseld as one of the last defenders. Helm Hama and many Erlingas fled to the Thusburg while Wolf sat on the throne in Meduselt and declared himself the new king of Rohan. The Thusburg was once built during the glory days of Gondor and Rohan used it as a base to defend the gap of Rohan. Wolf sieged the Thusburg but also the so called long winter began. This was an exceptionally harsh and long winter that lasted for 5 months and it caused heavy losses for Helm's people but also for wolves. Helm's son Hama, against the advice of his father tried to sneak out the fortress to seek for food. He never returned and got lost in the snow. His grieving father Helm clad in white blew his mighty horn in the night and sneaked into the camps of the dune landings. There he killed some of them with his bare hands and sneaked back every night. He continued this for quite some time so that hearing his horn struck fear into the hearts of the dune landings. Also the Susburg was renamed into Hornburg because of this. And now you know why it has this name, with Burg or Burg meaning something like stronghold or fortress. But one night Helm's body was discovered, standing, still ready to fight, but dead. He probably froze to death, but also Femin was most likely part of his death. The son of Helm's sister Hild, Freyalaf Hildesan, was in Dunharrow that was also under siege. After Helm's death he became his heir. In early spring he rode out of Dunharrow and surprised the dune landings. He rode to Edoras with a small band and caught Wolf by surprise, killing him and recapturing the capital. Also Gondor sent troops to help their ally and together they drove the dune landings out of Rohan and even conquered Isengard back again. Freyalaf became the next king of Rohan. At this time also Saruman returned from a journey to the east. He offered friendship and asked if he could have Isengard, in return he would protect it and the area around it. Freyalaf accepted and recommended that Beren, the steward of Gondor, may give the keys of Orthanc to Saruman. Orthanc is a black tower in Isengard that was once built by the Numenorians. And so Saruman made Isengard his new home. He was very interested in the Palantir of Isengard, which he kept hidden from the White Council. Freyalaf was succeeded by his son Brutta, who was later called Leofa, the Beloved. He looked after his people and helped those in need and so he was given this name. Rohan still recovered from the war against the dune landings and the long winter, but a new threat was on its way. In the Misty Mountains the dwarves were fighting against the orcs. This is the story of Thorin, his father Thrain the second and his grandfather Thror. You probably know it from the first Hobbit movie, even though it is quite different compared to the books.
After Thor's death in Moria through Azok, the exiled dwarves called all allied dwarf houses and mobilized a giant army to revenge Thor. They fought on many places and especially underground against all orcs they could find. In the end, at the East Gate of Moria, they won and killed Azok, at least in the books, but did not try to reclaim Moria for several reasons, Durin's Bane being one of them. After the War of the Dwarfs and Orcs, many Orcs fled from the Misty Mountains to the White Mountains, which led them through Rohan, and which caused again a lot of trouble, but Rohan fought against it. When Britta died, it was believed that the Orc threat was finally beaten. But his son Walder, who succeeded him after his death, would nine years later be killed by an orc arrow and avenged by his son Volker, who also could finally drive the remaining orcs out of Rohan. He was a great hunter. He went out to hunt the mighty boar of Everhold. He was successful, but was also killed by the boar and succeeded by his son Volkwinne. Folkwine again had to deal with dune landings. He also had three sons. To fulfill the oath of Eorl, he sent troops led by his twin sons to Gondor to help in the war against Harad. His twin sons Folkred and Fastred died during this war, so his third son Fengel succeeded him. Fengel was not very popular and known for his greed and love of gold. Because of conflicts, his son Fengel left Rohan to live in Gondor with his wife. When Fengel died, his son Fengel returned to Rohan, but was not happy with this decision. Fengel was married to a woman named Morwin Steelsheen. She was of Numenorian blood and quite tall. When Thengel was king, a mysterious man called Sorongil joined his service. We better know this man as Aragorn II. If you have only seen the movies, maybe you remember the scene where Eowyn mentions that she was told that Aragorn wrote together with her grandfather and asked him how old he is. Well, that was him in his youth and if you have seen my last video, you also know why Aragorn has such a long life and people of Rohan not. Also during Aragorn's time with Thengel, Saruman fortified Isengard even more. Thengel was then succeeded by his son, who you probably know very well, Theoden. Theoden was married to Elfhild and they had a son, Theodred, who dies in the Lord of the Rings. Theoden also had a sister named Theodwin, the mother of Eomer and Eowyn. And now we are finally at the time of Lord of the Rings. What we understand now is probably why the Dune Landings agreed to help Saruman in his war against Rohan, because they still have not forgotten how Freka was killed by Helm Hammerhand and how they killed their king Wolf. We also understand now why Saruman rules over Isengard, living in the Numenorean Tower or Thang. We know why the Hornburg has this name and why the people of Rohan have normal lifespans, but also the origin of the Meras and that Shadowfax is a descendant of Eorl's horse. This gives also additional meaning to Gandalf riding it and leading the army against the sieging orcs and dune landings at the Hornburg. The dune landings surrendered and Theoden allowed them to return to the land but let them promise to cease all hostilities and not come back. Also when Eomer becomes the new king he and Aragorn renew the oath between Gondor and the Riddermark. You see how everything is connected and how the circle closes here. I hope you enjoyed this video. It took me longer this time because I was quite busy the last weeks and it took a ton of research, especially pronunciation rules for Old English and Gothic. I messed up quite a few times but I tried. So sorry for the late upload. I tried to amp up my video output again. E3 is coming and I have a lot of ideas for new videos, also lore videos. If you like the video, do the Twitter and YouTube things. Thank you for watching and goodbye.